Let's save it, close it, check it out. Save it and close it. And let's go to the balance sheet. And I'm gonna run the balance sheet. We'll just double check that everything happened the way we thought it might go into the accounts receivable. Scrolling down, we're gonna say, then we've got this string music and there's the invoice. Uh, it's increasing for the 530. That includes the sales tax. So that's the whole thing here. Closing that back out, scrolling back up and back to our balance sheet. The other side usually is on the income statement. Let's run that to refresh it that most of it would go into the sales of product, but this case only the portion related to the actual sale item went in there. That's the $600. The $100 deduction, reduction is not included. So the 600 went there. Where did the $100, negative $100 go? It went to the liability account of unearned revenue. So unearned revenue has now been earned so that means that the unearned revenue account should go back down to zero. It's a clearing account in essence. That's good. So even though the unearned revenue doesn't have a, a sub ledger account tracking the customer information, we can just use it as kind of that, that clearing account as we get the deposits if you want to use this method. And then we've got the income up top. The inventory went down like it normally would. And so there's, so there's that happening and I won't get into detail on, on the sub ledger for inventory because that's not really our focus and we've seen it before, but the cost of goods sold, no real difference on the cost of goods sold. It's impacted by the, the one line item that dealt with, uh, that dealt with the inventory and the impact on the income statement is the increase in revenue minus the uh, cost of goods sold. And then uh, if I go to my sub ledger for the accounts receivable and run that, now uh, the, uh, who, who this was string music, was it? String music, where are you? There they are, there's the string music and it has the, uh, the 530. Now it still looks a little bit different. So if I go, let's, let's compare the full method now that it's been completed between the two methods here. So if I go back to my customers, I, I'm in string music here. And so if we, if we look at, we made an estimate and then we made a sales receipt. And so when we made the sales receipt, we got the $100, which usually would show up as something that would be unapplied, automatically applied to the invoice then. But in this case, we used the sales receipt and applied it to unearned revenue. So that wasn't exactly the same. And then we created the invoice and the invoice had to take into consideration within the invoice, this payment that was made uh, in the past. So it got applied out a little bit differently than the other methods. So, for, so when I go into this invoice, you can see that it got applied out up here instead of having it down here kind of in the note down below so again from a bookkeeping standpoint i don't think that is as nice as seeing the invoice being uh fully charged for the full invoice and then and then applying a payment to it as opposed to that that unearned revenue so this linkage between the forms to me is not as good an audit trail and it's a little bit more confusing from the bookkeeping standpoint but from a financial reporting standpoint it records the unearned revenue the way i would like to see it as we go and then if i look at the up if i compare that to the other customer eric let's go to anderson up top and see this is the method we used last time we made an estimate we actually made the, and then we made the payment based on the estimate and we ended up with this negative a 300 payment, which until we applied it out was showing as a credit, just like it would if I was at that point, I could see another example of a customer just so we can see it. Sales, customers, the other customer that we did this to was Sam, the guitar man, I think it was. And if I scroll down here, you've got this unapplied credit. That's quite conspicuous and easy to see from the from the bookkeeping standpoint and a little bit more easy to see from that side back to the customers let's go back to anderson and then uh back to anderson here we had the 
300. Now notice that the 300, because it was in there as a payment, it automatically applied to the invoice. So notice that the invoice here then is showing the total amount of the invoice, which was partially paid. And again, I, I like that better from just an audit trail standpoint. So if I, if I look at the invoice, I can see what was actually charged for the invoice and the, and the amount of the invoice was recorded like a normal invoice transaction would. And then the payment was applied to it down below. So I didn't have this kind of meshing together within the invoice, the, the customer deposit in the, the, the heart of the invoice. So that means when I look at the invoice, I can say, okay, yeah, this is the total of the invoice. And then we applied out a payment to the invoice, which again, if we just compare that to the, the other one here, which was uh, string music, string music. And I look at this, we got the hundred, we've got the hundred dollars paid, but it's not going to automatically apply to the invoice. I got to take it out of basically the unearned revenues. So that means when I look at the actual invoice, I don't get to see the full amount of the invoice minus the payment that was applied to it. Like I'd like to see from an internal kind of audit trail standpoint, but rather I just kind of got to know that if I go in here, I can see it clearly that that deposit was applied out and, but I can't really see that as clearly if I was just looking at it here, I got a sales receipt. I could put in the memo. Hey, look, this was a sales receipt. that was a customer deposit, but it's a little bit less clear to see the link between these two. So for my opinion, uh, it, the, this method that we're looking at here works better from a financial statement perspective to record your transactions, uh, on an accrual basis, you know, correctly as you record them. And it might work on some kind of industries. I'm thinking maybe that would be better to do if you're in like a service like company where you, where you get, uh, you get all your money from gig from, uh, a subscription model or something like that. All of your revenue is, is, uh, prepaid or something. And then you have to make periodic adjustments to it. Maybe that would be a better way to go. But I think in this, at least in this example, to me, when you're looking at like a deposit for, for a one-time deposit thing, I feel like the, the negative amounts in here have a better internal bookkeeping process are easier on the bookkeeper and can easily be adjusted for periodically with adjusting entries for financial reporting purposes but it might change from company to company. And that's just my opinion.